Welcome back to The Price of Business. I am your host, Kevin Price, talking to you about you and your business. It's your business to know what's happening out there with uh, the legal front and the business and the law. And one of my favorite uh, contributors uh, who, who talks about this is uh, Lee Kaplan, a great uh, business attorney here in the Houston area with Smizer. Kaplan and Veselka. Lee is always delighted to have you on the program. By the way, you can learn more about his firm at skv.com. Why don't you lead us right into uh, some topic options for us today? Well, four possibilities. One is the Affordable Care Act. There are going to be more reporting requirements uh, uh, for the coming year, whether or not you're smaller than 50 employees. Second is this whole issue of contract employees versus uh, our contract persons versus real employees, that is, who you have to actually pay benefits and salaries to. Third is this data breach data breach issue. And fourth is the importance of having some kind of writing that memorializes your contract because as business explodes and people do things orally, issues come up and, and frankly, uh, contribute to my law firm's bottom line. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and throw, uh, I'm going to throw a wrench in your whole process uh, and start with um, the uh, doctor, the doctor who got convicted and is getting <laughs> well, I'd be happy to prison. talk about that. Yeah, we'll, we'll throw that one in the mix, too. We'll start with that, and then you get to choose the next one. All right. Uh, well, but we want to talk for a few minutes about this. So she was convicted. Uh, it's, you know, uh, we were wondering about that the last time you were on. You seem pretty convinced she would be convicted based on what you saw. Uh, and then she uh, was followed up with a 10-year uh, sentence for that uh, conviction, which means the uh, earliest time she could in, uh, possibly have a uh, parole would be five years from now. Talk a little bit about it. Your thoughts. Frankly, I think the defense lawyers did an outstanding job. To me... This is someone who tried to kill somebody, and she's going to get off with, you know, a few years, what, four or five years in prison? And I think part of their defense, at least implicitly, was uh, this guy was a no-good SOB, and uh, don't feel too sorry for him, and you can understand a little bit of why he, I don't know about got what was coming to him, but there's a little poetic justice in this, so... I, I really think that, that the trial was permeated with the story of his infidelity and the lack of sympathy for the victim contributed to what I believe is a fairly light sentence. Yeah, you think it's fairly light? Uh, well, this he was did, clearly he premeditated. This woman may be half-crazed, but this is clearly pre- premeditated. Right, she certainly didn't confuse that with a sweetener. <laughs> well, there's that. I mean, he he knew, but... All these bizarre uh, threats that he had gotten and some of her comments about hitmen and trying to claim she was beaten up by somebody and that was going to be her excuse for having some kind of security around her. This is something that had been brewing for quite some time. She didn't one morning decide just out of of uh, the passion of the moment that he was treating her badly and she poisoned him. So I right. think her lawyers did a fine job. And yeah. he's gotten a fairly light sentence by my standards. Considering the fact she didn't even have a defense witness, did she? I don't. Uh, actually, well, during sentencing, she did. Right. Right. During and they all talked about she how wonderful number she of was. People and... come and talk about uh, how she was an empathetic, uh, a healing person. And, and I think, you know, that I really think the, the lawyers showed good judgment in the way they handled this case. Yeah, absolutely. So, what's your topic? Out of, yeah, out of your out of your four? Well, I don't know. I, I guess uh, uh, I would talk about compliance issues, and and that's both Affordable Care Act and this question about uh, which employees are employees entitled to benefits. Now, my firm has fewer than fifty employees. We're about thirty, but nonetheless. Uh, our office manager informed me in the last week or so that we're going to have significantly more uh, compliance reporting requirements in the coming year. Those, you know, those impose real costs, and I think ultimately um, we will find, in addition to the reporting requirements, that there'll be more requirements to provide coverage. I do know that my firm's insurance uh, policy is uh, health insurance is going to cost 
about 14% more in the coming year. And uh, How much? Uh, 14%. Yeah. How does that compare to a new phase? What's that? How does that compare to annual increases that you probably have had anyway? Well, we've had increases over the years that range from 3 to 15 or so percent. This is at the high end, but yeah. Let's face it. We are covering as a as a nation more ailments or more people with ailments than were previously covered. And you can't uh, stuff 10 pounds into a 5-pound bag. Uh, and expect it not to split. So it's going to cost all of us more. Those of us who have insurance and have had it in the past are going to be paying for more people in society. And you can debate the policy implications of that, but but there's also the compliance costs, the reporting costs. Uh, even though my firm is not technically required to supply health insurance, we we do for our for our employees, and they have the option of you know, adding family members, and we have reporting requirements uh, which are becoming more extensive every year, and they're somewhat confusing as well. But what you have to do really is start by going on to websites uh, offered by, for example, the IRS to find out the reporting requirements, and then most firms my size, I think, have benefits consultants who and health insurance agents and people who tell them what they do because of what they need to do because those people are in the business of learning that. So we create, whenever we have these new laws, we create new structures and more people find employment just advising on how to comply with the law. Mm-hmm. That's an expense that the society bears for good or ill. Yeah. So let's yeah. hope the cost curve really does get bent someday because if it's not, we've got a real problem. Yeah, government compliance uh, is probably one of the largest industries in the United States. When you when you look across all areas of compliance, it's pretty massive. And of course, and we have to pay for that. That means that the uh, that comes out of the uh, you know comes is reflected in the price we pay for goods and services. That's this stuff doesn't happen in a vacuum. Well, that's just the societal choice that we've made. The the real difference between the United States and Europe on health care is that. People here are socialized into the idea that they'll get the once they get health care, they're going to get the best health care possible. In Europe, people are socialized into the idea that there's a lot of health care they just won't get, whether it's provided by the government or anybody else, and that very few people are going to be entitled to absolute platinum, uh, high-level, grade A or triple A rated health care. So. Um, we we are used to having the newest drugs available to everybody. We're used to spending a lot of money on the last year of life. And uh, uh, to bend the cost curve, ultimately, we're going to have to reduce the amount of care that goes to the oh, elderly in our society. That's just a question of when. You know, uh, any any nation that does, uh, you know, socialized medicine, uh, you know, we already see how we treat veterans. You know what happens to veterans. And so they get they get uh, waiting listed into until they die are inoperable. If we do that to veterans, I can't help but think that will happen to uh, uh, the general population over time. Well, those are choices that we're going to make as a society. And and the truth is that until we make those hard decisions, all the costs will spiral and it will be unsustainable. So we're going to have to make choices. Do we want to do right by the veterans? Do we want to do right, if that's the right word, by people who are 75 and 80 years old and have have, uh, some sort of incurable cancer that will take their lives in six months? Uh, What do we want to do for children? How how do we allocate those resources, and how do we simultaneously encourage new strategies, new drugs, uh, new protocols, new ways of treating people that are more efficient and more beneficial, and that's really that goes to the policymakers. And uh, candidly, our lawmakers are not all that well equipped to do it. And the question is whether we want to let them do it or let the market do it. And um, and do we want to make the worst choice, which is where we have it partially regulated by the United States in a way that distorts every incentive? I mean, yeah. most people agree. I, I, I shouldn't say that. Many people agree 
that the fact that health insurance provided by companies is deductible as an expense by the corporation and doesn't count as income to the employee is one of the worst distortions ever imposed. That comes out of wage and price controls of, what, 60, 70 years ago, and we're still doing it. And if we moved away from that and towards a system where everyone could be in the marketplace and we didn't have that distortion, we might be better off. But in the meantime, we're moving from one system with a lot of difficulties that we understood to a new system with a lot of difficulties which are not all understood. And that's going to mean for a lot of upheaval and a lot of discontent. Lee Kaplan, that's a great uh, note to end on. Uh, You know, we need to be uh, really aware and really need to speak our voice when it comes to things like this. Uh, He is with Smicer, Kaplan, and Veselka. Lee Kaplan, thanks so much for being with us. Learn more about him and his firm at skv.com. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. I enjoyed it. As always, when we come back, much more for you. Do want to remind you, best content here shows up over there at usdailyreview.com. I am Kevin Price. This is The Price of Business.